What's up, YouTube? My name is Rob Guillory. Thank you for tuning in. This is my YouTube channel, and the purpose of it is to encourage, inspire, and give insight into what can be sort of a crazy-making industry. As always, I'm talking about comics. Now, this week, we are talking about something that is crucial to pretty much every aspect of the industry. I'm talking about collaboration. Um, now, this actually is one of the things that I get asked about the most, especially from folks outside of the industry who are looking to come into it. How do I find a partner to, to team up with? And uh, I, from personal experience as someone who's had many, many different collaborators and many different types of collaborations over the years, I can say that it is one of the most fulfilling and yet frustrating aspects of this business because you're having to rely on people and people can be a little flaky and maybe even a little crazy, which I've I, I've had some personal experience with, unfortunately. So I'm going to lay out some criteria that I think will be helpful for you guys. What questions sh should you be asking as you look for a partner in your creative endeavor? So let's dig into that, um, and I will check you on the other side. So this week, I'd like to talk a bit about the nature of collaboration. This is one of those topics that every creative is going to wrestle with at some point. And over the course of my time in comics, I've learned a lot from my various collaborators. So hopefully that'll be helpful to you today in some way. First, a little bit of backstory. As I mentioned before, I grew up in a small town in Louisiana in the 80s. Of course, I wasn't as privy back then to a lot of the information we have now. So I didn't know much about the inner workings of a lot of things, including comics. I didn't know the mechanics of how comics were put together. That sort of information was just, just right beyond my reach until the internet came into my life in the late 90s. But what was clear to me at a much younger age was that the books that I loved were the product of collaboration. People came together to produce these books, and that was obvious. The other thing that was obvious was that I seemed to be the only guy in the entire state of Louisiana that wanted to draw comics for a living. Seriously, I didn't meet another comic creator in my state until I was in college. I spent a massive amount of time in high school and in college looking for people to team up with. I was always searching for other creatives who were equally as driven to make comics as I was, and I constantly came up short. And then I found message boards in the late 90s, and I was blown away to find all these people from all, all walks of life, who were willing to team up and make stuff. Finally, I seem to have found some kindred spirits to team up with. And of course, I quickly found out it was a very mixed bag. Some collaborators were very serious. They showed up and they delivered. They had vision and they had the follow through to make it happen. And many were very, very unserious. Several times I teamed up with folks who seemed to like the idea of making things more than they actually liked actually making things. Again, this is just par for the course. And over the course of my career, I've been a part of many different types of collaborations. I've been the artist working with a writer. I've been the writer working with an artist. And I've been the solo cartoonist who then had to manage letterers and colorists and designers and whatnot. And each type of collaboration has its share of pros and cons. Anytime you've got two very different people coming together to make a thing, there's going to have to be a good bit of compromise to make anything work. And many of my early collaborations were as a young artist working with a writer, largely because, frankly, I, just, I was more interested in the art side of things back then. I just wasn't all that interested in scripting, so I was happy to give that away. And I had some pretty fulfilling experiences. There's really nothing better than hitting a stride with a creative partner that really gets you and values your contribution. And of course, my work on Image Comics, Chew, is the collaboration I'm most known for, and it's easily my longest collaboration. John Lehman and I worked for a little over eight years together, and hands down, that was the easiest partnership I've ever had with anyone. And John and I are very different people. Really, we're different in just about every way. We come from dramatically different backgrounds and have very different worldviews. But what we had in common was a mutual respect for one another, a love for storytelling, 
and some common decency. Neither of us were interested in screwing the other person over. Every business decision was done above board with the utmost transparency. And really, I think finding this common ground is the most important thing in finding a collaborator. Of course, quality of work matters. Your collaborator needs to be good at what they do. But really, the more I think about the folks I've worked with in the past, what comes to mind more than anything else is their character. Were they decent people? Could they be trusted to keep their word? Were they easy to deal with? Or was I always having to navigate their mood swings? Did they communicate? Or were they always dodging my calls, vanishing for weeks at a time? Collaboration really is a lot like dating. Sure, you know, looks matter, but the quality of the relationship and the longevity of the relationship depends on the quality of the person. Do they have integrity? Or are they just playing crazy? You want to be with someone that values your gifts, someone who can actually complement your gifts with their own, someone who brings the best out of you, challenges you, Someone who isn't going to bite your head off when you fall short, which you inevitably will. That is true for dating, but it's also very, very true when picking a collaborator for a comic. And that's why finding a solid creative partner can be the hardest part of the job, I think. It's very, very easy to find creatives who can draw pretty pictures. What's much harder is finding someone who can do it consistently over time while also conducting themselves in a sane in a professional manner. Good people and good collaborators are hard to come by. But my advice is when you find one, keep them close because they're very, very rare. As you begin to search for a collaborator, here are a few questions you should probably be asking yourself. One, have they proven they can be reliable? And this goes back to my previous statement. Anyone can draw a few pretty pictures on Instagram, but what's this person's work history? Do they seem to be someone you can count on to come through? Two, who are they really? And this one has more to do with their actual personality. And I'm not of the, I'm not of the belief that you have to agree with your collaborator on every little thing. I have lots of close friends and past collaborators who I disagree with fundamentally on many, many things. But I do believe there has to be a common fondness and a place where you do agree. Without that, you may end up in what's basically the comic equivalent of a bad marriage, stuck with someone you can't stand. Again, there has to be some level of mutual respect. Three, can you agree on a business arrangement? As you begin to interview potential partners, you need to be clear on what type of partnership you're looking for. Do you want a co-creator, someone who owns a part of whatever you're working on? Or are you looking for more of a work for hire arrangement where they own nothing? All of this needs to be talked about in the early parts of the conversation. And just for reference, when I'm getting offered a potential project, this is actually the first thing I want to know. Am I going to have a stake in what I make? Again, some of this is going to be hashed out as you get to know the other person, but I think it's a good idea to have some sense of where your personal boundaries are ahead of time. Four, ask around. If I don't know a potential collaborator personally, I'm going to reach out to a few trusted friends in the industry to get some sense of that person. The thing about comics is it's a very small community. And everyone sort of knows everyone else. So if you're a decent guy, that's going to get around. And if you're a crazy person, that's going to get around too. And as you start to ask these simple questions, you'll start to get a real sense of the other person. And from my experience, it tends to become very, very clear, very, very quickly, if you should be working with this other person or not. Of course, every relationship, creative or otherwise, is going to have its ups and downs. There's going to be a period where the two of you are getting to know one another, and this can be a messy process, but my advice is to give a bit of grace to your collaborator because people have bad days and mistakes are going to happen. But if your collaborator starts a pattern of bad habits, 
it's time to have a serious conversation. If they start flaking on deadlines, are vanishing for long periods of time, are acting in a way that damages your project in some way, it's time to talk. Because when you're in a partnership, what one person does can affect the other. So be sensitive to that. And lastly, I want to issue a bit of a challenge to any person out there thinking of partnering with someone else. I want to ask you one question, and it's a bit of a blunt question, but I think it cuts to the heart of the matter. So here's a question. Do you want a collaborator or do you want a slave? So why would I ask that question? Well, because frankly, after being around working creatives for a large portion of my life, I've come to realize not everyone wants a collaborator. A collaborator is a peer that comes alongside you and brings their own gifts to the project and together you two make something you couldn't otherwise make alone. And not everyone wants that. The rally is, the rally that I've found is that some folks just want a vessel. They want a warm body to do their bidding, which sounds really extreme, but I've met writers who look at an artist as just a means to an end. They don't value the artist. They just need his skill to bring their story to life. So in that case, it's less about two people teaming up and it's more about one person using the other. And my advice on this is simple. Don't do that. Don't be that guy. That's a recipe for a miserable, miserable relationship. And in time, as word gets out about how miserable you are to work with, no one is going to want to collaborate with you. Trust me. So beware, beware of that. Collaboration, in my eyes, is sort of like a long conversation between two people. You're each bringing something special to the project, and as you exchange ideas, the project grows and becomes more than you ever dreamed. And in the best type of collaboration, the project grows into something very different than you first expected. So you're about to start a project. You have a picture in your head of what this is going to look like. And a good collaboration is going to look very different from that picture in your head. And that's actually a good thing. When John and I began Chew, we had no idea what it would turn into. But over the course of an eight-year-long conversation, the book that emerged looked far different and far better, I think, than what we could have imagined. And that's how collaboration works. It's not a slot machine where you put a coin in and art comes out. It isn't mechanical. It's relational. It's a long chat between friends. And I think it's a, I think it's a chat worth having. So be open to the conversation because I think, it's, I think it's worth it. All right, and that concludes another video. I hope that you were able to get something useful out of it. Again, collaboration is just a naturally messy process. And I think that's that's just going to be unavoidable to some degree. Anytime you're taking two different people from two different backgrounds, putting them together, they're bringing their own sensibilities and their own, uh, you know, their own baggage. You're going to have a, you know, it's going to be a complicated process. It's just relationships in general. But I do think that, um, I think it's good for the creators. I think that every, every collaborator I've ever had has pushed me in a different way and brought, brought things out of me that have made me a better creator in the end. So I think that's that's worth pursuing. Um, and I think a lot of the headaches of collaboration, frankly, can be dealt with on the front end. I mean, there's it's it's unavoidable that, you know, some things are going to happen that are unexpected. But I do think some of the front end stuff, asking the right questions, being very clear about what you want out of the collaboration and being very clear on what your collaborator is also looking for, working out contract terms that you're both happy with. I think that will solve a lot of the headache on the back end and keep you from a nightmare scenario, which we've all kind of seen before. So just be clear, be clear about what you're looking for, be clear about your expectations for your collaborator, communicate that stuff clearly, be approachable and be, uh, be open to hearing what your collaborator has because they're going to have an opinion and that's, that's why you hired them in the first place. So be mindful of that. Also, be respectful. Again, without that mutual respect between you guys, it won't work. It, you have to have that or it's going to be a nightmare for everybody involved. So again, hope it was helpful. Um, that's it for this week, guys. I, I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments section where you at. Are you in a collaborative 
relationship? How's that going? Um, let me know. Hit me up in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, all the usual stuff. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'll check you next week. Bye.